Romans chapter 8, the first four verses. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled fully or fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit let's pray Lord we thank you for your word and we ask you through the power of the Holy Spirit to illuminate to our mind and our heart your message for us today and I pray this in the name of Jesus I found so often that people and situations can cause so much frustration, mainly, mainly people. You see, we cannot control the behaviors of other people. We cannot control their attitudes. We can't always en encourage people or control people to see and understand our priorities. So we should then work to change a situation that is negatively impacting other people, but don't allow the frustration of the situation, of the problem, or of people to control us and our thinking. I'm reminded of Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6, especially when facing problems. It tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. He will guide your paths. See, the problem a lot of times when we're facing problems or situations that are beyond us is that instead of working towards a good and healthy solution, we just start throwing around the blame. Instead of fixing the problem, we try fixing the blame. And doing this is an attempt to pacify our own feelings of inadequacy, that we cannot make the changes we want to change, that we want to see. And it doesn't release us from the bondage of fear or of anger. Our attitude becomes a greater problem. Even with all the skills that we may have gathered over the years, with all of the knowledge situations can still be so perplexing. And the only way that we can cope it is through prayer and with God. And as a matter of fact, it's not just coping, but we can thrive through prayer and with God. Every day in my daytime, I have three words that come up. Pray and breathe. Pray and breathe. Problems don't just simply vanish, even when I pray. But my perspective changes. And I am aware, again, of a power that is available to me to help me in difficult times. You see, we hate to admit it, but we are at times our own worst enemy. It's not other people. It's us. It's not the roadblocks that other people put up in front of us or our problems put up in front of us. It's us and our thoughts and our attitudes. And I don't need Oprah Winfrey and I don't need Tony Robbins to help me to deal with this problem. I need to remember, to connect with, and to trust in my Lord, my Savior, my never-changing friend, Jesus. As Paul makes this seemingly hopeless situation, hopeless statement in Romans chapter 7 and verse 24. He says, I have tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? But the good thing is that Paul doesn't just leave us hanging there, hopeless. Immediately after that, in the next sentence, he presents the solution. 
in verse 25 of chapter 7, which is the end of chapter 7, but it's also a beautiful segue into chapter 8. He states this, the answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and does. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all my heart and mind, but I am pulled by the influence of sin to do something completely different. So the answer is not fixing the blame. It's not even fixing other people. The answer is Jesus. We can't control other people's thoughts and attitudes and actions. We can barely control our own at times, it seems. And blaming only intensifies our feelings. Paul states, I've tried everything and nothing works when we try it in our own strength. Chapter 7 and verse 5 states, walking in the strength and the ability of our human perspective. Again, we try in our own strength. Romans chapter 8 and verse 8 says, the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. So human nature is sinful in its perspective, in its attitudes, in its actions. And Paul states, if we live according to our own, our own human nature, with its limitations in understanding, we are therefore subject to its powers and its influence over us. But when we remember to connect with God through prayer, and in essence, when we do that, we're breathing in God. We're reminding ourselves of all that God has made available to us that is in us. And we're breathing out. We're breathing out the frustration. We're breathing out the, the anguish. We're bringing out the anxiety. We're breathing out the pain. We breathe in. We, through prayer, we take in God. And we breathe out the influences of the sinful nature. Pray and breathe. Paul states, there was a time when we were completely at the mercy of our old sinful human nature. Our attitudes would move us towards sin, and it would go from bad to worse, making us a defeated and hopeless person, tossed to and fro, back and forth, carried about by every wind. But when we allowed, and I use that term deliberately, past tense, when we allowed Jesus to be an active part of our life by accepting him as our Savior, as our Lord, there came to us and in us a power, the power of the Spirit of God, which enables us to live a victorious life in spite of our circumstances. We are there connected, we are therefore connected with Jesus. And we are filled with his power. It's not a power of ourselves. That's the old nature. But the power of God, the new nature within us. A friend of mine took his dog and his family to the beach one day. About an hour and a half drive. When they got there, their dog found this dead, decaying carcass of a large fish. And he rolled in it. They had to drive home an hour and a half with this happy, smelly little dog. We have a, a nice little dog. His name is Buddy. He's nice and he's annoying. We really like him. But as I mentioned, he is annoying. Why is he annoying? Well, because he's a dog. That's his nature. I like sometimes to watch these, these contests, these dog shows. And I, I like to see how people take these, these cute or large animals and they get them trimmed up and they deck them out and they put a little bow in their fur and they parade them around in a near perfect state. However, you take this same dog and you allow them to find some dead decaying carcass and they will roll around in it and be just as happy as a pig in mud. Why is that? Well, because dressing them up doesn't change their nature. It's the dog. You know, we can spiff up our odor appearance through all sorts of self-help programs. 
We can put on new and fancy clothes, but unless we allow God to change us on the inside, we still have that old sinful nature which is calling the shots. See, God changes us from the inside. We can make choices to allow God to help us with our thoughts and our attitudes because we have within us the Spirit of God. You see, we can also choose to be completely absorbed in worldly things which will lead us to frustration and to anger and to conflict, even to death. Or, through the power of God within us, to be absorbed in God and in His Spirit, which brings life and peace. You see, because of what Jesus has done, we are no longer slaves to the sinful nature. But we have in us His Spirit. And by taking time to pray, it reminds us of the power that is available to us. For the power of the life-giving Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, has freed you through Christ Jesus from the power of sin that leads to death. Promise freedom, not through program, but through God, the Spirit who gives life and set you free from the law of sin and death. Pray and breathe reminds us of all that Jesus can do, but also reminds us of all that Jesus has done. That's a good place to start. Remembering the benefits of our salvation. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, these words, So now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. That doesn't tell us that we won't sin. We're still going to sin. It doesn't say that we're not going to make mistakes. We're still going to make mistakes. It doesn't say that we're not going to, to fall or to fail to the point that we look silly or even stupid. Because we're going to fail sometimes to the point of looking even silly and stupid. But it does remind us that we're no longer under any condemnation. We don't have to walk around carrying that burden of guilt and shame. Because you see, when Jesus died on the cross, he died not only to pay for all of the sins that we have committed, but all of the sins that we will commit. That is the good news. No condemnation. The victory is not living a life without sin. It is living a life without condemnation and having the power to rise above our sinful nature. It's an old hymn the words of which go like this, O victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. The forgiveness, the power in the blood of Jesus to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10, Paul reminds us, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and it is not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not of works so that anyone can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The Bible teaches us very clearly the way we act, is determined by the way we feel. The way we feel is determined by the way we think. I cannot force myself, even myself, to change my way of thinking. If a child is crying, you cannot force them to be happy. You cannot say, I command you to be happy. It, do it doesn't work that way. But when we allow the Spirit of God that is in us to work in us, He brings the change that we need. He changes the way we think. That changes the way we feel. And that changes the way we act. He gives peace. He gives life. He gives power. 
Let me close with this poem here. When the world that I'm living in collapses at my feet, and when my life is all tattered and torn, though I'm windswept and battered, I'm going to cling to his cross. And there I'll find peace in the midst of the storm. There is peace in the midst of the storm-tossed life. There is an anchor. There is a rock to build my faith upon. Jesus Christ is my vessel, so I fear no alarm. He gives peace, peace in the midst of the storm. Let's pray. Lord, help us remember today that simple truth that when we focus on you instead of on our problems, when we remember to breathe and to pray, we will once again be reminded that even though we live in a, a world that is filled with problems that can bring us such frustration and anxiety, by trusting in you, we not only have the power that will free us from our old way of thinking and help us to focus our thoughts on you. But we will have peace even in the midst of the most trying storms. Help us, Lord, to remember these truths. Help us, Lord, to remember to stop, to pray, to breathe, to trust in you. I ask this in your name, Jesus.